Ah, oh, dang, it's raining. Whew. I've been up for hours, but Melinda just now got up. And man, she's in a grouchy mood. Boy, she giving you that hard look face. She ain't done nothing. She just ain't feeling good. She ain't resting good. And uh, if she ain't feeling good, you're going to pay the price for it. Now, I'm telling you. She just woke up strutting around, grouchy, cranky, complaining about the lights I had on. I told her, wait till your eyesight starts hurting a little bit when you're trying to do stuff that's dark. Someday yours is going to fade down a little bit too. And uh, you're going to be turning on all them lights. And you're going to be thinking, man, now I know what James is talking about. And I'm, I feel bad. Maybe she won't feel bad. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Said I'm gonna get my uh, I'm gonna get my boots on, and I'm gonna head outside. I'm gonna go work cows. I got cows. I can get up and put tags in their ear, check them out, separate a few, and uh, move them to another property. I said, all right, that's gonna be my plan right there. That's my escape. I'm gonna get out of here, get out of this house, and uh, go head to the field and do cows. And I, that was my plan just now. I walk out the door and it's raining again. Again, it's raining. Oh my goodness. I don't know what to do. <laughs> uh, I need to find a hole to hide in and shelter in place from Melinda. <laughs> Man. I don't know where she went. I'm going to tell you. Melinda's cranky. You want to get the heck out of Dodge now, I'm telling you. When Melinda's cranky, she's going to push your every single button. Every button. She's going to push it to the max. And then finally, when you get mad and you blow back, then she's going to come back five times as strong because you blew back. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm sure, I'm sure that I ain't the only one in that situation. You see me looking around? I'm scared. <laughs> she might hear me talking. <laughs> I got to find a hiding place. <laughs> and then that's the next thing and then if you disappear because you're trying to avoid the situation <laughs> then she's mad because you disappeared saying you abandoned her <laughs> she'll be saying oh do you remember me I thought you forgot me <laughs> oh I remember you all right I remember that attitude also and that's why I got the heck out of Dodge mm-hmm <laughs> shelter in place it's like watching out for a tornado coming <laughs> and it might be because she had a bad dream or just because she didn't rest good her mind man it's always yeah Tell her just chill out, chill out. I think sometimes she gets uh, mad because I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, this just a little, uh, I'm not ragging on Melinda or nothing, but it's just kind of odd stuff, you know, that we go through, everybody goes through in relationships, marriages, you know. Like, 
I'm I'm sure she's getting tired of just sitting here and looking at my ugly mug for real, boy. And uh, and then the only other option she's got to look Cap's ugly mug or Mike's ugly mug. So she got a lot of ugly mugs to look at. And uh, so I know she's she's probably getting a little cabin fever because I tell you what, Melinda don't she don't set in place very well. She's a pretty hyper person. So. Um, Yesterday, she tells me, or the day before, that we had one check the cows over on another property. We need to go check them. Okay, okay, we'll get to it. And then yesterday, she's strutting around here and she's giving me that like crazy eye, you know, and carrying that little tune, playing that little tune of bad attitude. And I said, oh, I don't know what it is. We need to get out of here. So, uh, I get all ready and I tell her, all right, Melinda, let's go over and check the cows over at this other place because that's what she says she wanted to do. And uh, you just go, I don't want to go. Just go, just go do it. <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness gracious. Come on, let's just have a real talk. Do y'all ever go through this mess? I guarantee you do. It may not be exactly the same, but. I'm like, no, nah, get on up. Come on. I know you want to go. <laughs> Just go. <laughs> but then when I, I'm acting like I'm going to the door to close it, I see her roll back real quick and look like, is he really going to go without me? <laughs> uh, yeah. Don't, don't listen to what they say. Watch out for what they mean. And I'm like, come on, Melinda. Let's go. I've already got my boots on. I'm ready to head out. Let's go. And uh, then she says maybe or something and comes downstairs. And then she makes it a drawn out deal. She's going to eat a little bit of food. She's going to drink a little bit of coffee. And I tell her, oh, just take your time. Take your time. No problem. Just take your time. Enjoy your coffee. No problem. Because I wouldn't know her anyway. I just trying to do it for her. And uh, she takes her sweet time. But then she's like, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> uh, yeah. But once we got on this road, and we pulled out of here. The world was all right again, you know. She enjoyed the ride over there. She enjoyed checking out the cattle. And uh, everything. Come back home. The mood's. Uh, about 50% refreshed, but not 100. And uh, then by that point in time, I'm I'm melting down. My body wants to sleep because I'm still adjusting from jet lag. Boy, it's, it's got me bad this time. So it's kind of funny. And here we are today, right back in that same boat again. Hmm. Oh, please, all of this soon be over. <laughs> <laughs> really not trying to insult nobody i know it's it's really serious everywhere people live in the city can't help they live in the city that's their life that's where they're at um but i have heard that ridiculing statement many many times many times and uh I'm like, yeah well that's old country folk you wouldn't have no food in your supermarkets. You wouldn't be eating if it wasn't for us old country folk. Remember who handles your food first, front line. Yeah. So, uh, nevertheless, honestly, just trying to have a little fun there. I'm not trying to beat up city people. They can live up there and their um, crammed up life if they want. I appreciate them living up there. I do. I appreciate all the people that live in the city. Appreciate the people. Got to get me some pepper going here. Shaking, huh? I I appreciate people living in apartment complexes. I really do. I love you guys that live in apartment complexes. I love you guys that live in sky rise, condos, and towers. I love you people that live up in crammed up neighborhoods. Just one, one wall to a house built just... Uh, one meter, one yard from another one, you know, or something. 
with your little small fence in between. Man, I love that. I think it's wonderful. I think it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Because if you didn't live like that, and all of you spread out all over the land everywhere, and you unstacked all those people out of those apartment complexes, and you unstacked all those people out of those skyrise condos, and you gave every one of them a little plot of land, there wouldn't be no farmland left. There wouldn't. Because you know what else they would do? They would choose to put their house and pour concrete and build roads over the premium farmland because it looked pretty. And instead of going out and building your roads and building your yards and building your cement driveways and building your houses on land that is not good for farming, on the rocky soil, which is a better soil for your foundation. And you're going to landscape your yard anyway. And this is the irony that I, I just see and shake my head that even the government allows that to happen. Like all of Dallas, that was a rich, fertile Trinity Valley. It grew there because it was prime, rich soil for farming. And it became a farming community that grew into a town, that grew into a city, that grew into a megatropolis, all built over prime farmland. Then you go just the other side of Dallas to Fort Worth over there. Well, it turns rocky and more arid and everything right over there to that side, but still has water sources though. And they didn't build there. Now, if we were really that smart creatures that we think we are, we would have enacted and seen this, but they just didn't see it back then. They thought, man, you know, there's never going to be this many people. There's never going to be this many people on earth. Oh, if you told them that, they would, you are crazy. There'll never be that many people. They were smart. All the population that's sitting in like Dallas, for instance, here where I live, would be instead over there towards the Fort Worth side going out, living on that, that soil, building their subdivision communities on that soil. All this has happened over here coming out east of Dallas now, north of Dallas, all of the prime, fertile, beautiful farmland is being covered over in subdivisions. Of course, subdivision people don't care. They're just trying to make money. They don't give a rat's butt if they destroy that land forever and encase it in concrete and pipes and wires and traffic and pollution and all. They don't care. It was already pretty level. It was already pretty free of trees. And it wasn't rocky so they could run their pops all on the ground really easy. So it's a win for them, a lose for humanity. Yeah. And sometimes I think that's where a powerful government should exist. I hate the government sometimes for some things. But when I look at the overall big picture, sometimes I think, man, we need a government that's got a big old brass set of 